So I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. I'm going to take you through my thought process because that's actually been asked for so that you understand what my thought process is with this image. So let me deselect the snapshot. We've got our first module, the framework RGB one. And there's a couple of things that I want to address here. First, I want to go to scene and then click the auto tune levels button. That will automatically use some values. Now I'm going to the look tab and I'm going to change the contrast to 1.1. The reason for this is because the higher you go, the worse it looks in the image. Now, obviously that happens when you increase the contrast, but for me, the sweet spot with this module specifically has always been 1.1. And then I'll add in contrast layer using different modules. Now, when I look at this image, I see we've got some dark parts over here. We've got a bright subject or bright subjects that is apart from the dog, but we'll work with that in a different module. But we've got this very bright spot that distracts our attention. Now I can cut it off. That's the most easy part. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep this in. I'm going to the exposure module. And with the exposure module, we already have one added to this stack because we are using the scene referred workflow. Now, if we click this button, we get new instance or duplicate instance. In this case, I'm going to click a new instance and I'm just going to click here to create a mask. And I just want a circle. And with that circle, I'm going to click inside here. And if you don't see the mask, just click here with this little symbol. And now you see that this part will be affected. Now let's drag down the exposure so that it is less bright. Right, moving on to the next one, which is working with the colors in the image and the contrast. Now for that, I'm going to use the color balance RGB module. And the first step to always do with this module is go to the masks tab and then click the contrast gray full chrome, click this eyedropper, right? That will select the entire image and that will give the proper value for it. Now I'm not going to bother with the four ways tab in this tutorial, but I'm going to use the master tab. And why am I going to use the master tab? Because I want to add in some contrast using this slider, but I also want to work with the linear chroma grading. So the colors, for instance, and I want to work with the saturation and we can also work with the lightness if we desire to do so. Now in this case, first let's go with the linear chroma grading. Let's drop down the shadows. So I'm not going to address the entire image. I'm going to go for these specifically. So shadows, midtones, and highlights. And let's increase the midtones. And let's do the same thing for the highlights. And look at the effect, right? So now they are being desaturated and now more color is being added to them. And the same principle applies for the perceptual saturation grading. Now I'm not going to change the global saturation of the image, but I'm going to address the shadows, midtones, and highlights specifically. And then the same goes for the perceptual brilliance grading. And in this case, I'm not going to touch the highlights as well. I'm just going to work with the shadows and the midtones because I want to drop the shadows to make more dark, right? And I want to increase the midtones to brighten it up. And once the values are to your liking, you can move on to the next module, which is the tone equalizer module. Now let's activate that. And here's where the magic is going to happen, right? So we're about here when it comes to the exposure. And in this case, I'm going to add in a mask. I'm going to use an ellipse. I'm going to place it over us. And then are basically over my girlfriend and my daughters. Now let's click this so we can actually see the mask. And now we can drag this out or inwards and make it the size that you want it to be. And I want to add something over the dog as well because the dog is very dark, but I want him to stand out as well and not have him get lost in the image. So for the dog, because it's a ver very weird angle, I'm just going to do it manually using the pen tool or the path tool. And I'm just going to draw around the dog like so, and then close the mask with your right mouse button. So now we've got two masks. So we've got one over the dog and one over my girlfriend and my two dollars. We've already established where these values are. So I'm just going to drag these up and watch the magic unfold. Now, because I want to prevent any halo later down the line, I'm going to feather it and I'm going to blur it quite a bit as well. And this is where the magic happens, right? Because we are going to go here, new instance, duplicate it. And I want everything to be affected except for them. So in this case, I'm going to use the same shapes, but I'm going to invert the mask, right? I'm going to drag this down, which as you can see, numbs down the entire image, making it way, way more dark. Now you can make it as dark as you desire to be so. I think this is a pretty good sweet spot. And now let's add in some local contrast to make it stand out some more. So local contrast, 
And in this case, we want to add in the same masks again. So no mask used is going to be changed to the tone equalizer one. And let's increase this value to 150. That's usually the sweet spot. Now we can invert this as well so that everything else is being affected except for us, which will give it that moody look that we're going for in this image. And now the final step of this image is changing the colors, right? So we have a great tool in Darktable for that, which is the color equalizer module. Let's activate it, let's open it up. And this will allow you by using this eyedropper tool with a control that will allow you to select an area, okay? Now I want the area of the greens and because this node is not perfectly aligned with this line right here, we can use the node placement and then drag it, you know, left to right and have it match up perfectly here. And then now in this case, I know that we need to change the hue of the colors. And because I want it to be a more full like image, because that's basically the period that we're in right now. This was shot during the summer, but right now it's fall. So I feel very full like we can drag this down and change the color straight away. Now let's increase the saturation to make the effect more strong and we can change the brightness as well to give it more mood. But because I want it to be standing out, I'm going to add in some lightness, very, very slightly, very gentle. Now let's look at a before and after. So take a snapshot here and then select that snapshot and then go back to the original one, which is the Filmic RGB one without any modifications to them. And now drag this to the right and you see that the image is now completely changed 